Today we're going to be doing the battery relocation model on the XR650L. The first step in this whole process is going to be removing the left and right hand side panels. The left hand is easier to just twist screws, but the right hand uses the 10mm socket and you go ahead and just remove it just like that. Following that we're going to go ahead and move on to the seat strap. We're, we're just going to use an allen key and remove both the left and right hand side once again. After that, of course, we're going to be moving to right underneath under the seat where we're going to use that 12 millimeter socket and remove the bolts. Keep track of these, by the way, you don't want to lose these. You're going to need them later on. So, of course, after removing all of those things that hold down the seat, you're just going to go ahead and pop it right up and off. So now you have access to the battery box. You're going to go ahead and pull on the two tabs and go around the seals to make sure nothing gets torn or anything. But now you have access to the battery box here. So, we're going to be removing the battery bracket currently, there's just two Phillips head screws, just go ahead and remove both of those, and then take it out. It should just be able to slide out, and then following that, we're just going to go ahead and remove the battery itself, which we're going to be done with. I know some people, they're willing to just put on this right battery just like this, so they can keep ease of maintenance, but I really liked the look of the flat side panel, so I wanted to go ahead and relocate it myself. So, after this, we're going to be removing the fuse box, just two more Phillips head, you can use the same screwdriver if you use a decently sized one. And then just going to go ahead and pull it out. Try to keep track of those screws, not like you're going to need them now, but say for if you ever wanted to undo this mod or if you had electrical issues, those are useful for reinstallation. Now the ignition box, which I do believe that is what the part is there. It just is held in by two metal tabs, so just go ahead and pull it out. Following this, we're going to actually go ahead and pull this little rubber grommet held on the top. Pretty sure it's for water resistance, but go ahead, pull it out so the battery box is disconnected from the actual wiring harness. Then pull the CDI straight out, disconnect it with the two connections of course and then we're moving on removing the battery box itself so if yours is anything like mine after you remove these bolts the battery box still just won't fall off it uses two 12 millimeter screws but this is held in with some force so don't be afraid to wiggle a lot maybe hit it a bunch and then of course just force it off after that moving on to the next step so I'm just taking off that rubber grommet now real quick because it's no longer needed as we don't have the battery box anymore. Freeing the wiring harness there and now I'm just detangling all the wires so they're easy to work with and reroute. After you untangle all those you're going to of course head back to the top of the air box where you're going to see all your other wiring. I'm just going to go ahead and start undoing all the little zip ties underneath there that came from the factory, disconnecting as much as I can just because we're going to take all this wiring and move it out of that place. We're trying to put the battery there, not leave the wiring there. Right there I'm going to be removing the ground, so don't forget to do that or else nothing's going to be moving anytime soon. So now I'm just trying to make sure if I can just push it out of the way, finding more and more connections as I go, just disconnect as many as you can so you can leave it open like that. Now this is where you may have something in the way the snorkel. If it's already there right now, just go ahead and take it out, de-snorkel your bike, you'll be amazed on how much difference it makes. All you do is drill out the rivets. I have a video on that if you want to check it out. Now you're going to notice that the battery has space for it now, but it's just rocking because there's this little lip right in front of the airbox. So all you're going to do is you're just going to dremel it straight off. It's going to be in the way, and the seat will not sit properly if it's still there. There's not a choice I'm aware of that you can not do this for, so just, you know, get rid of it. You're not cutting into the airbox, just so it's off of the airbox. Now you're going to be removing the seat so we can go ahead and remove the carburetor so rerouting the wires is infinitely easier. If you have the chance to get a rag, go ahead and grab a rag so you don't, when you pull off the fuel tube, it's not going to drip everywhere because that's kind of important for safety matters. So now if it's anything like the IMS tank like I have, you're just going to go ahead and forcefully take it off. It's held on really good stock so keep that in mind. So go ahead, remove the carburetor. If you don't know how to do that, you can check out a video I have already made on my YouTube channel here. So we're going to go ahead and just pushing the wiring harness, the main wiring harness, through. So we're going to move it to the other side. Because basically, on the current side we're on, the clutch side, there's not much room for the wiring harness to sit. But the brake side, the front brake lever, it has a whole lot of room for more wiring harness. We can stuff it back in, and there's still room for the battery. So here I'm just going to go ahead and you're going to see me just rerouting the wires to the best of my ability. I wish I could tell you there's a specific way of doing this, but just keep shoving wires so there's enough space for the battery to still fit. I like putting them all through the frame there because I just like, all right, more space, fantastic. So go ahead, after you've rerouted them, 
reinstall the carburetor and you're going to see the whole wiring harness still. Make sure the battery works still. Make sure it fits. And I like keeping it there for the sake of I know it will still fit without obstructing. So how you rewire this or reroute the wires is totally up to you. But a few pointers I have for you is definitely put the ignition to the right of the shock absorber. And then put the fuse box kind of below the frame there. You may have to remove these fuses like I did, but it will help tremendously to do so. I mounted the fuse box with zip ties afterwards, but I was like, alright, I still have a CDI to place. So I went ahead and just put it inside the air box, and then I had it mounted with a zip tie. You don't have to secure it with a zip tie, but I mean, I just chose to for the extra security. Anyways, just reconnected the restability, but those are just a few pointers that I would really have liked to hear beforehand. Another strange detail I had to change was where my ground was located. It was typically located on the left side, but I went ahead and moved it to the right side for the sake of that was where the wiring harness was making it go. It was too short to go to the other side, and I didn't really want to modify the wiring harness at all. So I went ahead and was like, all right, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the battery and test it out. And it worked great. I'm sorry I didn't include a video of it starting up and such, but a few more details. I have to go over it, and then you can try it yourself in your own XR. So on the seat there, there's two holes. You may have to dremel them down as well. You're going to see another cut section on the side. Do not cut yours. That's not necessary. Remove the extension arm there because it's now not going to need the extension. It's going to be flat. Moving on. This is just a few quick pictures of the whole setup here. How I have it totally finalized just so you can have an idea of how I laid out my wiring without me just jambling my arms around everywhere randomly. Just a few pictures there. And of course the CDI on the inside of how I mounted it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and give me any advice you guys have. Thank you.